Mr. Uh, Smith, you know, he, he came back home in the evening and he saw a, a nice big raccoon on his house, right? And he said, yeah, you know what? It's fine. Maybe, you know, it came random raccoon came. Mm -hmm. So the next day he came back again in the evening, right? So he was coming and the raccoon was going. He was uh, coming after making the living and <laughs> raccoon, raccoon was going to uh, make the living, right? right so right. then, you know, it got a little fishy that we have the same raccoon and uh, and that night he start hearing some uh, creepy noises from his uh, attic. Right, right. And then, you know, with a little research, Mr. Smith realized that, you know, the raccoon and Mr. Smith, they have the same address. They're living under the They're same roof. They're living under the same roof. So the raccoon had made a home or right. a, a, you know, a future home in the attic but of Mr. the house. But Mr. Smith realized he was the one paying the bills. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Smith was paying the bill and Raccoon was living for free. Right. So that is a that was a little a little story I wanted to share. And myself, Jesse Sandu, your local broker from Remax, and sitting next to me is my friend, my brother Nicholas. Nicholas, how are you? I'm good. All right. Always a pleasure. All right. So the topic that we are discussing today is like uh, is wildlife and the residential properties, Absolutely. right? Uh, with the wildlife, I'm, I don't mean like lions and tigers, or, or I'm talking about raccoons, skunks, squirrels, squirrels, birds, birds, opossums, possums, mice, mice, yeah. right? So as much as we share this world, we share this earth. They have the same right as well, Absolutely. right? So we cross paths with the wildlife. Absolutely. So I have a uh, Nicholas in front of me. We're gonna be talking to Nicholas about uh, the property get infested. Sometimes the raccoon, you know, they come, they you know, they go into the attic and they deliver the babies there. And they are the most territorial anim animals that I have, uh, you know, ever heard about. You know, I have heard from you from uh, other sources as well that you know if they make up their mind to deliver the babies there, they'll deliver the baby there. It doesn't yes. matter. Absolutely, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. So Nicholas is expert with the wildlife. So anytime. You have a raccoon problem, you have a skunk problem, you have a squirrel problem, you have a birds in your attic. I've seen birds in the attic as well. So he's a extractor, extractor for, for those animals in a humane way. You know, sometimes the raccoon is in the garage. You, you can't just, you know, like start scaring them, beating them. No, you, you know, as much as you have a right on the earth, they have the right as well, right? So we do cross paths. So welcome to the, welcome to the show, Nicholas. Thanks for coming. So, say something about your business, say, th say, say something what you're all about. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, you know, I'll, I'll touch on a few things that you said. It's interesting, uh, you know, I believe that, you know, animals, I think uh, we, they probably have even more right to this space than us because they were here first. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people get upset that the raccoons and squirrels are making homes in their house. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it was us that cut down the trees and cleared the forest where they would normally live and oh, put yes. up these big trees that we like to call houses. Mm. And so for the, uh, the raccoons, the squirrels, they're just looking at that as a place, a new mm. place to go, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why, like you said, they're looking at certain spots on the house, maybe an unfinished spot uh, where there might have been wind damage, and they look at that as a hole in a tree. Uh -huh. They sneak inside there. It's uh -huh. nice and warm inside, and they're using that as their home mm. now. Uh, other times what happens is um, you know, raccoons or squirrels, they'll go up on top of the roof, they'll feel the heat from a vent uh, mm -hmm. escaping from the attic, they'll, uh -huh. they'll center in on that and uh -huh. realize, wow, there's some nice heat inside here. Uh -huh. Raccoons will rip open those roof vents, squirrels mm -hmm. will chew a little hole and go inside mm -hmm. uh, and then make their home. Uh -huh. So we have different breeding seasons uh, okay. for different animals. Yeah. What's the breeding season for raccoon? Yeah. And, uh... So breeding, breeding will happen in around February, March. Uh, they'll have their babies uh, late March, April, May. Okay. Uh, and uh, squirrels, similar as well. Squirrels will have two different breeding seasons because they do mature quite uh, quickly. Okay. Uh, so you'll have the uh, raccoons will have their babies mm -hmm. up in your attic in, in the, like I said, in the March, April, May. Uh, you know, you may hear um, it's interesting, you can even hear it, it echoes very loudly from the ceiling of the attic. Uh -huh. You could even hear the fur uh -huh. of the mother raccoon as she's moving sometimes. So it okay. sounds like this sliding sound oh, in the yeah. attic. Yeah. Uh, and then as the babies get a little bit older into like the yeah, first they, week, uh -huh. you'll start to hear them make this little, <laughs> this little kind of noise. noise. And then that's when people get more present to, I think something's up in my attic. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, people will 
I hear something in the attic, uh -huh. you know, I, I better call somebody, uh -huh. uh, this isn't right, you know, uh -huh. or sometimes it's one, two, three days, a week later, uh -huh. because they really don't, a lot of people don't even realize uh -huh. that an animal can actually get inside the roof. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of times I work on homes that are brand new homes or very new homes, uh -huh. and it's, it's just not a common thought that something uh -huh. would be able to get into a house. A raccoon is a nocturnal animal, right? right? Yep. In the night they go out to yep. eat. So I've seen like, a, you know, a raccoon in the attic, they, they start scaring him, you know, and you know, it's all in vain. Yes. You can't scare that guy, no. right? If, the, if he made up his mind that That's he's right. going to lay the babies here, yeah. they have to lay the babies, right? So, you know, how do you find out, like, let's say I hear something, how, how do I figure out what's in the attic and uh, what's the next step, basically? Great question. Uh, it's, the, it's the number one question I ask when somebody calls me and uh, says that they hear an animal in the roof. A lot of times it's, the animal has been in there for some time. Uh, they've seen the animal, like you said, Mr. Smith, seeing the raccoon coming and going to work. Uh -huh. uh, or, they, you know, they've heard the actual sounds of the babies crying and uh -huh. now they're very sure there's an animal. However, sometimes you might hear a little noise. You're not sure yet and you want to get to the bottom of it before it, it, it's, you know, been in there for too long. And so the one question I ask is, what's the sound you're hearing? Uh -huh. When are you hearing that noise? As you had illustrated before, raccoons are nocturnal. Uh -huh. Squirrels live on a similar sub... Uh, um, uh, um, routine is us. They get up in the morning, off they go to work to collect the nuts, to go out and you know forage and come back in the evening. So if you're hearing the noises in the morning times as the sun is coming up, that's quite possibly going to be squirrels. Okay, the squirrels are getting up and leaving the house to go out and look for food. If you're hearing the noises in the evening time, you know in dusk, seven, eight, nine o'clock, as the sun is starting to go down, again, squirrels, they're going to be more active in the evening when they're coming home from work, okay. putting their bag down, watching some TV with the kids, you know. Uh, and then if you're hearing the noises a little bit later, mm -hmm. 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be more your raccoons. Okay. Leaving for the night, for the coming work. back 12, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the morning, uh, coming back in to go back to sleep for the daytime. Mm -hmm. Right? If you're hearing those noises in the springtime, you're looking at babies. If you're hearing the noises closer to the uh, summer, into the fall, it could be more uh, um, uh, the animals are looking for a warm place for the, to nest for the, for the winter time, right? Um, so different times of day will we'll identify different animals that might be in the roof and different times of year can identify which uh, kind of a, animals are in the roof. That's a very so. good information. So is there any federal rules that, um, you know, like you can, you can harm them or you can kill them or something like that? You know what, uh, there, there's, there's really no need to uh -huh. harm them, right? Uh -huh. uh, the thing that uh, I get a lot of people, they say, you know, do you catch them? and take them far, far away into the forest. And, uh -huh. and I say, it's not necessary. I uh -huh. always say it like this, look, uh -huh. the, the main point is to protect your house, okay. right? Don't worry about the animal, just uh -huh. protect your house. Okay. Uh, so I say, hey, look, if I lock your front door, uh -huh. you can't get back in. Uh -huh. You're gonna go to the back door. Uh -huh. You're gonna go to the side door. Uh -huh. So what we wanna do is we wanna lock all the doors on to the house, house so the animals can't get in. Yeah. We put on a one-way door, uh -huh. For instance, if it's a raccoon, okay, okay. this is a one-way door. Okay. Here's the inside of the attic, here's outside. Uh -huh. We put this on where they're using the entrance to go in and out. Uh -huh. so they they, come, in, they okay. come out okay. and okay. they close. Yeah, done. They can't get back in. The glass is very tight, so, they cannot open it. So now if they come out right. and the babies are still inside. Right. So, so they're not going to be able to be, go back and then... Depending, okay, so it, there's different processes depending on the time of the year. Uh -huh. If we have babies in the attic, if we're talking about March, April, May, June, uh -huh. in that time frame, uh -huh. right, it is absolutely necessary. Uh -huh. For the first thing I do, once I establish what kind of animal is in the roof, uh -huh. the first thing I'm going to do is I want to go inside the roof. Uh -huh. I'm going to go into the attic. I don't uh -huh. recommend doing this for somebody that doesn't know about animals uh, uh -huh. because like Jesse said, they can become very territorial. It's not common. Uh, a lot of times I can walk right into the attic and I can pick up the babies myself mm -hmm. and the mom will just stay over here and watch mm -hmm. me. Uh, but I don't recommend people trying it on mm -hmm. their own. I have a lot of experience, yeah, thousands yeah, of I've, raccoons I've and you know, so I do have a lot of experience. And with the that. fitness level as well. You are maybe sure. faster than a raccoon. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> You got to be very careful because yeah. up in the attic, uh, you know, similar to the cabana here, we have uh, rafters that you have to step on and you can't see, it's all insulation. Yeah, yeah. So I have uh, some customers, they tell me they tried to go up there uh -huh. and I look and I say, is that how the hole in your bedroom mm -hmm. got there? You know, because their foot came through the ceiling, mm -hmm. you know? So I go into the attic, I'll, I'll find out where the, you tell me where the baby sound was coming uh -huh. from. I go to that area, sure enough, there's the babies. Uh -huh. Uh, I have a, a little bag that I keep with me. Okay. I go and I put the babies inside the bag, uh -huh. a little bit of insulation from the attic uh -huh. that's familiar to their nest. Uh -huh. I zip it up. 
the mother is watching. She sometimes, 99% of the time, she just lets me take the babies. Uh -huh. I take the babies, I come down out of the attic, mm -hmm. I go onto the roof, I have a little box that I've constructed, I put uh -huh. the babies with that insulation inside, uh -huh. Right, I fasten that to the roof, okay. just outside the door. So now we install the door uh -huh. where the mom was coming in and out. Okay. She will now come out at night. Uh -huh. When she comes out, she Pick can't get back babies. in. Okay. The door, the box is maybe a couple feet from the door, uh -huh. so she can't. You know, they're smart. Uh -huh. She'll put her foot inside the door, like when she comes out to hold it, uh -huh. take the baby and go back in. So we put it just far enough. So, oh, so she has to come right out. Uh -huh. Now she's gonna try and come back in. She can't get uh -huh. back in. Uh -huh. She's gonna take a baby or go and navigate the roof. Look for uh -huh. another door. Uh -huh. However, it's very important after I put the door on, get uh -huh. the babies out, secure uh -huh. all the other doors, mm -hmm. spots. Mm -hmm. Now she's going to take the babies. Uh -huh. She's going to one by one climb down off the roof. Yeah. She's going to go look for another house. Another right? House. That's oh, the reality. Yes, yes. She's going to look for another house. She's going to break in. She's uh -huh. going to transport the babies uh -huh. into the new house. Okay. We're going to repeat this system. Uh -huh. One, two, three, four weeks uh -huh. until the babies start to become bigger. They, they mature very quickly. Uh -huh. And at a certain point, it's now not necessary for me to go into the attic to uh -huh. get the babies. Uh -huh. They're big enough to come out on their own. Uh -huh. That's when mom starts taking them out at night, uh -huh. like you said, to go look for food and teaching them uh -huh. how to navigate. She'll bring the babies out on her own, out the door. Uh -huh. She can't get back in, uh -huh. another house. Okay. Another right. phone call, so, remove them again and uh -huh. repeat right. until right. they get old enough you know, in the summer, yeah. it's not cold out anymore. Uh -huh. They start to hide in places like under barbecues. And they or... learn to how to hunt and all, right? So that's... Raccoons are very important. Mm. They're a good good part of the ecosystem. They sure. they clean the environment, you know, the, yeah. the leftovers that we, we, right. we throw as a garbage. And mm -hmm. so they... They are, they, 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 are do, they are one of the cleaners of the nature, I sure. would say, right? Yeah, like, so, a, like a vacuum cleaner. Like a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> right? But again, uh, so let's come to the real estate. Uh, it's not a National Geographic channel, yeah. but we're going to talk real estate sure. about, right? Yeah. So I have seen that happening. So sometimes the raccoon is extracted and there's some droppings of the raccoon that is left in the attic. Now yeah. the house is sold, inspector comes and he said, oh, there's a uh, droppings, you know, when was the raccoon in here, right? Mm -hmm. So now this new buyer, he gets all paranoid and he said, oh no, I don't want to live in a house where there was a raccoon. Right, right. Right, so you guys remove that droppings and everything as well? Like, right, so. Or like uh, fix up the insulation that uh, raccoon have uh, damaged it a little bit? Absolutely, so one of the things that is very important uh, if the raccoon has only been in there for a couple, maybe a week or two, no uh, hasn't been in there that long, uh -huh. typically the raccoon is pooping outside. Okay. Uh, that's one of the signs how I know what kind of animal is inside the roof is okay. the poop that I see on the on the top. Okay. Um, however, I do get calls where raccoons have been in the roof living for generations, uh -huh. and now they're really comfortable. They're pooping inside, and it's important, yes, uh -huh. to start. We start. Uh, it's a separate service of uh -huh. cleaning all that poop, the insulation that's dirty, taking it with us, bagging it up, and removing uh -huh. it from the attic. Uh -huh. Uh, we may have to do a chemical spray to disinfect. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and then sometimes uh, in newer homes, uh, if you want to make sure you're retaining the R value of uh -huh. your insulation in the uh -huh. attic and having the roof in the attic perform uh, optimally. Mm -hmm. uh, I always say a raccoon in the attic is the same as a kid going out in the yard in a snowstorm uh -huh. making tracks. Okay. So when you look in the attic, you see the insulation is all packed down everywhere. Okay. It's important then. Maybe there's no poop to clean up, uh -huh. but maybe it might be a step to call up uh, uh, an insulation company to okay. come and, and blow new insulation. Filling. Right. So these are all things that absolutely I recommend for somebody when they're buying a new home, mm -hmm. uh, have the inspector specifically uh -huh. look uh -huh. in the attic for such stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, because you're going to want to make sure that the uh, the house is performing mm -hmm. uh, properly. Right. So. So that's a raccoons, right? So we have uh, discovered uh, we have covered a lot about raccoons. So what about squirrels? Uh, on the topic of selling your house or oh. buying a house, squirrels uh, can actually do the most damage. Uh, so squirrels, they like to chew. Uh -huh. Raccoons, not so much. They might leave some poop up in the attic, uh -huh. but squirrels, very important. The moment you get squirrels in your attic or inside uh -huh. your roof, um, as you were saying, I think I have one right here, perfect. Uh, the dryer vent, the bathroom vents, yeah. okay? The squirrels, they like to climb inside here. Okay. It's nice and uh, protected, like a hole uh -huh. in a tree. Yeah. They make their nest in here, but a lot of times they can actually, when they're installing these on the house, uh -huh. uh, they don't connect properly, and yeah. the squirrel, when it gets in, gets into the walls. Uh -huh. They like to chew on wires. Oh, wow. So here's here, fire hazard. Uh -huh. uh, you get pot lights, you get the electrical uh, uh -huh. wires in the, in the floors, in the attics. Sorry to interrupt yeah, you, no. there was a case in 2019 Mm. So a brand new Honda Civic. Yes. The the they had a big trees uh, where they live and the the squirrel went inside the hood 
and chew all the wiring. Absolutely. And they have to write off that car. Yeah. And insurance didn't cover it. No. Yeah. So, so that's that the bad. same thing like your home. Uh, these squirrels, they they don't intend, they're not trying to damage your home. Uh -huh. They just like chewing on things. Yeah, yeah. The, just like a puppy with a yeah. new toy, they're yeah. teething. Uh -huh. uh, they like to chew and gnaw on stuff, uh -huh. right? And the wires, they love to do it. Even the Christmas lights on the outside of your uh -huh. house sometimes, uh -huh. you'll see them chewing on those wires. Uh -huh. So that's a, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. And it's very important uh, to have that uh, uh, checked out as well when they're doing the inspection. Uh -huh. If there was a squirrel in that attic previously, uh -huh. to make sure that that inspector is checking out any of the pot lights and wiring up inside the attic. To yeah. make sure that nothing's been chewed thank and you, no fire thank hazards. Thank you so much. It's a good information. The bird Absolutely. feeder is good. You know, nice, beautiful birds come and pick mm -hmm. up. But sometimes we put, uh, you know, that stuff out there, and you know, we are inviting. That's the, right. We are yeah. inviting the squirrels. We are inviting all the different animals uh, to make nest and to make, um, you know. So we need to stop that as well. Which yeah. is also sorry to interrupt. Which is also it's a great point, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Is also harming them. Uh, because the foods that we're leaving out is uh, not is not a common food. So the uh, raccoons, of course, they're eating berries and nuts, uh, foods like this, right? Uh, so when we're putting out foods that is not common for their diet, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's actually causing them problems in yeah, their yeah, own yeah. Uh, digestive tract. <laughs> not to mention, uh, when you invite animals to get close to your property, uh, you're inviting them to then try make and make nest. a nest in their in your home, in your home, which then, when we're removing the babies, uh, when we're doing that, we're causing undue stress to those yeah, animals yeah. by inviting them to be close. Yeah, so I know we love to look at the animals. Yeah, we yeah, love yeah. to make them feel comfortable. But the best that's, thing we can do is let them live, let them forage for their own food, yeah, let, let, let's and let not them make find them their lazy. Own. That's right. And absolutely. give them, uh, you know, no fast food for the animals. Hot and butter chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much. So guys, the takeaway point here is, the takeaway point is, you know, the house is uh, is your space, right? Mm -hmm. But you need to make sure, like when the house is 15 years old, 20 years old, you know, you got to make sure that, uh, you know, as you have said, if you, all the doors are closed, so no intruder will come to your house, maybe it's a raccoon, maybe it's a thief or maybe anybody, right? Yeah, yeah. So you need to make sure your attics are in good condition, your roofs are in good condition, your air dryer vents are in good condition, your uh, any outlet from fan. outside. Huh? The bathroom fan. The mm. bathroom fans yeah. are in good condition and yeah. if in case, if in case, you know, there's an intrusion of a raccoon or any other animal, uh, you know, work with the right people. You don't need a company that comes with a, uh, you know, a picture of raccoon and skunks painted all over their 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 trucks and they are outside and the, all the neighbors know that this property was infested with the raccoons or mice. Right. So you need a you need a right person and who do it humane way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know he's the guy Nick. And uh, Nick, what's your number? To get? I know you are a busy guy. If he's a, if he's extracting a raccoon on a uh, on a on a top of a roof, he might not be picking up the phone. You gotta leave the number and he'll get back to you. On, yeah. Right. Yeah. So what's your number? So the best way to contact us, uh, uh -huh. you can call us. Uh, the business line is 647-996-1998. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, you can send a text as well, usually a quicker response time on a text. Uh -huh. And then you can check us out on social media. Uh, our Instagram is just for you home solutions uh -huh. and the website as well is just for you home solutions. Com. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you for taking the time out. The purpose of this video is just to, you know, whatever information we can put out there. Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, there's a, you know, house is one of your biggest investment and you got to make sure that you safeguard it from every angle. And Absolutely. I have realized wildlife is, is not one of the uh, big, but it's still, it's a little bit of a threat to the integrity of the of the house right Absolutely. as you need a right person right professional for the right job also you need a uh, you know right professional agent uh, you know if you are planning to sell the house after extracting the raccoon right so you can give me a call as well my number is 647 987 6666 647-987-6666 and uh, thank you Nick, Nick for taking time out and give give us your valuable information and uh, you know once again thank you so much.